Thank you very much. My name is Robin Kluchak. I'm with Stop Waste. I'm with my colleague Jesse Walter from San Francisco Department of the Environment. And we're here to tell you a little bit more about Recycleware, the online um, searchable database for how to reuse, uh, recycle, and properly dispose of your things. So, once upon a time, in a not so distant past, we had the recycling wizard and the eco finder and other very useful, magical, and innovative tools which helped the good people of the Bay Area figure out how to reuse, recycle, and properly get rid of their stuff. And all was good. And then, over time, these tools started to lose their magic and the mighty kingdom of Microsoft, in some cases, was no longer supporting their technology. And so, Several cities, counties, and a regional public agency joined together to figure out how to solve this problem. And with lofty ideals, began a quest to create a new tool that would, that would help the good citizens of the Bay Area find the highest and best use for their new thing. And we'd like to acknowledge our partners in this project. So, with these lofty ideals, we were hoping to create an easy, easy and convenient tool for the user, both in terms of the search experience as well as convenient results, which included curbside. We were looking to do a one-stop shop for their answers, so regardless of where you live or whether you're single family, multifamily, or commercial, you could find out if you lived in Fremont but commuted to San Jose or lived in Oakland and commuted to San Francisco, you would be able to go to one place. We also wanted to promote the desired behavior, so there's a built-in hierarchy in the system which promotes reuse, recycle, and proper disposal. We wanted a consistent messaging, jurisdictional nuances, and we also wanted to make sure that it wasn't an educational tool, but more of a how-to tool. Also, a search behavior that emulates what the user is used to on the online database, and a, an ability to provide feedback to the administrators um, based on the feedback, based on, on searches and analytics. So San, San Francisco led the way and launched version 1 in 2012, and Palo Alto and Stockways followed shortly thereafter. And then after a year of experience, with over a year of experience and feedback, it was determined that we should make some revisions, and a streamlined and mobile if responsive version was launched early this year, which Jesse will tell you more about. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a really quick uh, tour of the user's experience uh, in Recycleware, from how they get to Recycleware through uh, the recommended action that we all want them to take. Um, so uh, Recycleware buttons. So this is sfenvironment.org. That's the button on the right. Um, these things have a consistent logo. They can be used, they can be used with different color palettes. Um, to match or pop with various government websites. When the user clicks on those buttons, they get taken to recycleware.org, and this is the landing page. Um, it's a very clean, simple, focused look. When they start searching, we actually trick them into answering two other questions, where are you, and who are you? And when they actually start typing, uh, Recycleware emulates Google. Uh, you start typing B-A-T-T, -T, you should start to see a list of different types of batteries that are in Recycleware. Um, it's this functionality right here that helps jurisdictions listen to um, what our, how our constituents are phrasing their own requests and questions. Now, if something is too vague, or we didn't exactly figure it out with predictive search, um, you may see a page like this. Most users actually don't see this, but this is a page that kind of more formally asks them to clarify what item they're trying to get rid of. Now, once they actually hone in on that item, uh, they get taken to this action page. And again, at the top, we're confirming for them their audience and their location, because if SF Environment is running a Facebook campaign and we're linking directly to this search, 
and someone shares it and then their friend in Alameda sees it, it may not apply to them. So we really need to confirm who the answer is for. Uh, we also, um, right below that, we are confirming for the user um, what the thing is that they're looking at, with, which helps them uh, differentiate. So clicking on that definition pops open a little definition of the thing. And above the, um, even just before we start telling them what to do with it, we have a hazardous waste alert. And below that, we actually start to get to the fun part, the actual action, the, the desired behavior. Um, now, just before we get there, we also have other types of alerts in Recycleware. We have an opportunity for a bulky uh, alert, uh, a buyback alert that says, hey, this thing may be worth money. Um, but really exciting one is reuse. Uh, it's kind of an educational component where some people may not think that this is reusable, but we have an opportunity to tell them that. So moving down the page, um, we have, for any given item, we have dozens or hundreds or thousands of services. So sort, sorting those search results is really important. And <clears throat> basically, the default sort order for Recycleware is um, a combination of uh, proximity, cost, and what the company does with it. So it's basically, it's a combination of customer convenience with also an emphasis towards highest and best use. Um, additionally, the user has the, can take control over this a little bit and filter their own results. So clicking that filter results opens up a little thing in which they can say, show me just the free pickups, show me just the places where I can get money back for it, etc. Next to that is a button, is a link for uh, displaying a map of all of the drop-off sites so the user can uh, kind of elegantly just see what's most near them. Again, moving down the page, each individual service uh, has a Map It button, which takes them over to a Google Map so they can get there. And lastly, each company or service in Recycleware has a page of its own. So clicking on the name of a company takes you to that company's page. And on the left, up at the top, you'll see that this is kind of some more additional logistical information about the company. And then below that, uh, we list everything that they take. <laughs> now, everything you just saw, um, except for our jurisdictional websites, are mobile ready. Um, and this is kind of a small little detail, but I think it's really cool. Um, since every vendor, every company gets a page of its own, uh, Recycler is providing a free service to big recyclers, to small recyclers that may not have a website of their own that's search engine optimized. Um, uh, so yeah, it's kind of like a Yelp as well for recycling. With that, I'm going to turn it back over to Robin. So going to the 2020 thing, um, looking back on, on, um, the, on the creation of Recycleware, so we had some challenges coming up with a common list of terminology and definitions between five agencies was a mighty task. Coming, having a MOU um, signed by the five member agencies and their legal counsels was also a bit of a challenge. Um, timeline and requirements, as mentioned, we had really grand ideas, and we have done really grand ideas, but a lot of those were a lot more complicated than we initially thought, so things have taken a little bit longer. Our requirements, um, um, our requirements have been complicated, and, and that's part of why we do it. We just recently launched the, the next version because we realized we wanted to streamline the process for both the user and the, the, and the, the administrators. Um, um, but having worked with five different agencies for this long period of time, it's been a great experience in terms of developing relationships with ongoing relationships that we wouldn't necessarily have with different agencies, even though they might be our neighbors. So that is something that's been, been a really nice experience. Um, looking towards the future, as we mentioned, just in January we launched the next version of it, which is, is mobile ready and also is a more streamlined user experience. Um, we're, we're looking at user-focused design and simplifying back-end administration. 
and we'll be working on this through the end of the fiscal year. We've got a big push going through the end of the fiscal year for both the updates as well as fixing bugs that, that come up. So if you do check it out on the break and something's not quite right, feel free to let us know, but also know we're doing a big, a big, big update of both the experience and the data through the end of June. Um, this is a software project. It is a data project. It's therefore ongoing and iterative, so um, by nature, but um, we're, 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 we're pleased with our next version. So again, um, this is Jesse, that's his contact information, and I'm Robin. If you'd like to get in touch with us, we'd also like to acknowledge Wendy Hediger from Palo Alto, Deidre Dingman and, Mark, and uh, Maureen Parks from Contra Costa County, and uh, Diana Milano from the City of San Jose, our other partners on this. Thank you. It is, it is a mobile friendly, it, uh, uh, that was part of our January uh, revisions. Yeah. Not, not at this time, uh, no. But uh, we did make some strategic technological choices that would make it um, easier to translate had we not made those choices. So it, it's ready, but it's a question of funding and that's not easy sometimes. My name's Max, and I had this idea, and I'm really glad that you guys made it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, have you considered uh, the functionality of people taking pictures of something in terms of identification um, in semi-real time so that people know what to do in the future? Uh, yeah, actually, I brought this up with Jack Macy a long time ago in the context of the bag ban. Um, uh, the Google similar image search could actually be a functionality to kind of help users take a picture of something and have that kind of connect the dots for people. Mm -hmm. However, that would be a very expensive lift. Um, yeah, very expensive, but it's a great idea. Right now, we just have to rely on typing. And Scott, back here with uh, how recycling. Um, we get calls all the time from members of the public. You know, I've got a truckload of cardboard, or I've got this and that material, or I'm taking. Currently, you know, we try to give them as much, we don't like passing people off to, to you know, making them call someone else or transfer them around, so we try to give them the best <coughs> answer we can. So this is great to know about for the very if they do it. And I'm really delighted to see that you built in some of these hard as well. So right now we use the like current time on and other miscellaneous stuff, uh, which not necessarily, doesn't necessarily have the hierarchy built into it. So I'm excited about that. Are you sharing this with other states? <clears throat> um, well, it's a little complicated. Um, <laughs> I've been advocating for this for since I started. Um, I want to work on only open source projects. However, the, the account that pays my salary has stipulations in it that date long, long ago, uh, in which um, basically there's a policy that says you can't give away stuff. And that's kind of an arcane interpretation of how it's written. And I've been working in my spare time to try and basically provide this for free. Uh, one little note, before Recycleware version 1 launched, um, we get a lot of delegations at the Department of the Environment, and people were kind of telling these delegations. Speaking to your point, <clears throat> before the launch of version 1, Recycleware.org was visited by over 60 countries before its launch. Wow. And that was in 20, early 20, 2011, late 2011. So the interest is there. However, we don't really have an easy mechanism to uh, share it outside the Bay Area. We are looking. Part of its internal capacity as well to, to, to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and I thank you for doing this. And I wonder how much coffee you're getting now. Um, I had a feeling this would come up, um, but I didn't really run up-to-date searches. Uh, with the launch of version 2, uh, all the URLs changed, so that kind of got a little more difficult to answer for you. But we kind of average about 300 unique searchers a day. Um, but honestly, we haven't had the capacity yet to really dive into the analytics. We also want to capture about six months of baseline data before we really do a push on that. Uh, 
Um, so there's five, um, five agencies involved, and we've all taken responsibility for the data. Um, we're currently, the Stopways, Ale representing Alameda County, is currently doing a big data push. Our initial data is a little dated, and so we're, we're now, we have staff in the office um, contacting vendors to make sure that the data is up to date. Um, ideally, we'll be doing it um, ongoing. Um, but that is data freshness is, is, is part of what we're working on as, as a group to try to figure out as well. So I see there's a few more questions, but there's two of them, so you can uh, ask them at lunch. Thank you very much. How many of you are curious about what's happening in Oakland? Oh, wait, excuse me. Excuse me. Oh. Actually, how many of you are interested in what happens to used toilets? <laughs> Actually, that, that does seem a little odd, but I think I initiated this with a newsletter article a few years ago. But the gentleman here, Paul Burns, is with, let me get it right, Fire Clay Tile. And he, uh, he lives in San Francisco, and he has an operation in San Jose and in San Francisco. But they make tiles out of porcelain, recycled porcelain. I think that's really cool. Thank you so much. So I started my business about 28 years ago, so I'm a manufacturer here in uh, Northern California. It's not always the easiest thing to make products here with costs of labor and housing and regulations, etc. But one advantage that I really try to mine is all the waste that we uh, that we do here. So since we're a population of whatever, about five million people, there's constant waste streams. And so I look at those and uh, pick products that really make great future products. So I, I really look at using everything to its highest uh, use and uh, making beautiful things out of it. That means